Okay, here in the top left we have a huge matrix, and we're told that we have to row reduce it to reduce row echelon form. Now, I understand that row reduction can be very tedious, and I understand that there are plenty row reduction calculators on the internet that you can use, and it'll get the job done super quick, but you can't use those online resources for your midterms, right? So you have to learn how to do it, and it would be advantageous if you were pretty quick with it too. So here are my four tips on uh, getting faster with your row reduction. So the first one is to follow the row reduction algorithm. And this was taught in lecture, and I'll go over it again. Basically, it's just a process that you follow to make sure that your row reduction steps are taking you in the right direction and as efficiently as possible to getting your matrix to reduce row echelon form. So we'll go over this. The second one is don't show your work. So if you have to, like if it's in the problem, it says show your work to get full credit, then you have to show your work. But if you don't have to, don't. And what I mean by showing your work is um, this kind of thing, like writing down row two equals row two plus four row one, this kind of thing. You don't have to show. I'm confident you can do this in your head. Um, obviously, you have to show your intermediate matrices. Um, where else, like, all that you can't do in your head, but you, you don't have to show this this stuff, like, uh, row 2 equals row 2 plus 4 times row 1. Okay, the next, uh, the next tip is to combine the steps. So, obviously, don't combine too many steps, because um, you'll just confuse yourself, but within reason, combine steps. So, for example, if you can swap two rows and then scale one of them, you can do both of those, so you only have to rewrite the whole matrix once, right? And then my last tip is very important. At all costs, avoid the use of fractions or decimals. Um, now, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes using fractions is inevitable, and it depends on your matrix. But take the time, take the extra second or two to think, what's the best row operation I can do so that maybe I can avoid using fractions? Um, and that will serve you well as you continue to row reduce. And then one other thing I want to talk about and mention about row reduction is be very very careful with stuff like when you're doing row replacement and you have to do uh, arithmetic like negative 2 minus 3 times negative 4. Uh, students always get this wrong and they'll say negative 2 minus 12 is negative 14 and then and then they do the, the rest of the row reduction and their final matrix is completely different from the correct one um, and then it's a pain to go through it and find where they messed up. So if this is negative 2 minus 3 times negative 4, which is negative 2 plus 12, which is 10. Okay, just keep that in mind. That's the most common mistake, like uh, silly mistake that students make when they're row reducing. Okay, let's go through the what I mentioned, the row reduction algorithm. So looking at this matrix in the top left, what's the first step that we want to do? Well, to have a matrix in reduced row echelon form, which is our end goal, we have to have all our pivots equal to 1. So our first pivot's right here in the top left. So the first step is we take our matrix in the top left entry. We generally want to just make it equal to 1. Okay. Then after that, we use row replacement, and we get all the entries below the pivot to be equal to 0. right? And then the next step is ignore this. We'll come back to it later. And then you look at this smaller matrix down here. okay? And you do the same exact thing. So this is a recursive algorithm. So in this smaller matrix, you go to the top left entry and you make that a one. And then you put zeros below it through row replacement. And then you ignore these, we come back to it later. And then you look at the smaller matrix down here and you do the same thing, you make this a one. And you put zeros below it, you ignore this. And you look, all it's recursive until you get to, the base case is when you have just a one by one matrix, you make this equal to one. And then you'll go back and you'll uh, use row replacement, and you'll get zeros above the pivots as well, and then you'll be in reduced row echelon form. It just so happens in this matrix that you get a row of all zeros at the end. And so I just want to show you um, that last half of the row reduction algorithm. So let's go down, and we, we get a matrix that looks like this eventually. We'd get something like, I'm making up the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 1, 2, and then I told you that the given matrix uh, happens to have a row of all zeros at the bottom. 
So what's the next step? So you have your pivots here. The pivots um, go top left to bottom right. There's zeros below all the pivots in the bottom row. The row of all zeros is at the bottom. So review my video on the row echelon form, how to identify it. But this matrix is in row echelon form, but we want to go to reduce row echelon form. So the last step is you get zeros above your pivots as well as below. And so how do you do that? Well, you use this row replacement, row operation. You say row 2 becomes row 2 minus 2 times row 3. And what does that do? It turns this 2 into a 0. Um, and the reason you do this at the end, the reason that we're using this algorithm is because at this point, we have zeros here to the left of the pivot. And so when we go through and we do this row, this row operation, we do 0 minus 2 times 0, the 0. It doesn't change it. 1 minus 2 times 0, it doesn't change it. So because we have zeros below our pivots when we're doing this step, um, it doesn't mess up all the, all the good stuff uh, that we have accomplished up until this point. Hopefully that makes sense. But then you do the same kind of row replacement up here, and you turn this into a 0, and you turn this into a 0. And once you do that, you have um, your matrix in reduced row echelon form, and we're golden. So let's go through and actually do it. So I re reprinted the original matrix here. And so what's the first step? Remember, we want to turn, put this top left entry to be a 1. So how can we do that? Should we scale the first row by negative 1 third? This is where I, what I said about taking that extra second to think about the smartest row operation you can do. If you scale the first row by negative 1 third, then you get fractions all over the place. And then you have to deal with those fractions for the rest of your row reduction. So what's another way that we can get a 1 up here? Well, we could do row 1 plus, becomes row 1 plus 4 times row 3. Or something that's easier still is we can just swap rows 3 and row 1. So let's do that. So I just say when I'm not showing my work, quote unquote, I just go like this. And I do this tilde, which means that the matrices are row equivalent. And so if one matrix is row equivalent to another, it means you can get to that matrix by applying only row operations to the other matrix. Okay, so that this, this tilde means row equivalent to. So all we did in this first step is we swapped rows 1 and 3. So I'm not going to write that down because I want to save time by not showing work. I'm just going to write the matrix with the rows swapped. So we get this. Okay. Next step, row equivalent to. Now we have a 1 here. Remember the next thing is you want to get zeros below it. So now I'm going to do three row replacements in one step. Okay, I'm going to knock all these non-zero numbers and knock them out, turn them into zero, right? So how do I do that? I do row two equals row two minus three times row one. I do row three equals row three plus three times row one. And then row four equals row four minus four times row one. So I do all those in my head and it, it's not that bad with practice. So the first row doesn't change. The second row, each entry we take away three of its corresponding entry in row one. So this is literally what I say in my head. So this entry is this minus three of these. So that's zero. Then I say this minus three of these. And be careful, we're subtracting a multiple of a negative number. So don't get confused. This minus three of these is this plus three, right? So we get negative four plus three is negative one. And then in my head again, I say this minus three of these. I get two, and this minus three of these is this plus three of these is minus one. And I do the same thing for row three, but now you have to add three of the corresponding entries in row one. So we get zero. And then we get this plus three of these is minus one, plus three of these is three, negative one plus three of these is negative four. And then the last row, four minus four of row one, so we get zero, um, we get two, we get negative six, and we get eight. Okay? So I did three row replacements in one step. That's got to save a lot of time because we don't have to rewrite the matrix two additional times. Okay, then this is row equivalent two. Row one is good for now. What's the next step? Well, we want to make this a one, and we want to make everything below it zero. So, for example, we can do three uh, row operations in, in one step again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale the second row by negative one to get this equal to one. And I'm gonna do row three equals row three minus row two, to get this equal to zero, and then this, they're all even, so I'm just going to make it easier for all of us and scale it by one half.
So you can argue that these are not necessary, not necessary, but like that last one, scaling it by one half. But if it just helps you think clearer, then it's worth it. So we have one, negative two, one, right? Scaling the segment by one half, or by negative one. And then we have zero, zero. I'm doing row two minus row one. Sorry, row three minus row two. We get zero, one, and uh, minus four plus one is minus three. And then I get zero, one, negative three, Okay, so we're almost done getting zeros below the pivot. Oh, sorry. Right, so now we have this equal to 1. We need to get zeros below. So we have one more to go. So this is row equivalent to 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, negative 3. And then we do row 4 equals row 4 minus row 2. 0, 0. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Right? Okay. Almost done. We can Now we can say, look, if we scale row 4 by negative 1, it's the same as row 3. So if we do that, we get, um, we have the opportunity where we can just knock out row 4 completely. Because if we have these rows that are the same, so if I say plus 1, negative 3. If I scale the row 4 by negative 1, then these are the exact same. So we can say row 4 equals row 4 minus row 3. And since they're the same, row 4 just goes to all zeros. So now we have this matrix. And then that row of all zeros that I was talking about earlier. Okay, we made it this far. We're in row echelon form. All right, so I'll make a note of that. If the question says, just take it to row echelon form, you're done. But we want to go to reduced row echelon form. So the next step, we have to get zeros above all of our pivots. And to be clear, here are our pivots, right? This is one. So now we say row 2 equals row 2 plus 2 times row 3. So um, I'm also going to combine that step by saying row 1 equals row 1 minus row 3. Uh, so we'll do that together. Remember, there are these two zeros here, so they don't affect, affect the first two entries of rows so one and two. So row one becomes one negative one. Let me do row one minus row three. So this is zero, and then negative one plus three is two. And then we get zero, one, and we do row two plus two times row three. So we get zero, and then minus, one minus six is negative five. And then we get 0, 0, 1, negative 3, and then our row of all zeros. Okay, we're almost done. The last step is right here. We need to get rid of this negative 1. So we just say row 1 equals row 1 plus row 2. So we say this is 1 and 0 and then 0. 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3. And just like that, we have a matrix in reduced row echelon form. Okay, now I did a lot of talking, but if um, if uh, I was you and I didn't have to, we could have knocked this out in a matter of minutes, and then you'd have much more time to solve the rest of the problem uh, like you would in a normal linear algebra problem. First step is always row reduce, and then you got to do some theory after that. Okay, so now we have our matrix and reduced row echelon form. Let's do another example. New example. This one's a little bit uh, shorter and easier. 1, 4, negative 3, 8, 0, 0, negative 1, 1. Okay? What's the first step? Well, here are our pivots. Here's this pivot. We have ones below it already. Perfect. Then we go to our next pivot, which is this one. We turn that into a 1, right? So I'm going to scale second row by negative 1. 1, 4, negative 3, 8, 0, 0, 1, negative 1. Okay, now we have a 1 here. So now we're in row echelon form already. See, this one is, was a lot quicker. Then the last step is, here we have our two pivots, and we need to get zeros above them, each of them. So we need to turn this negative 3 into a 0, so we say row 1 equals row 1, plus 3 times row 2. So we get 1, 4, 0, 8 plus 2 times row 8 plus 2 times negative 1 is 6. And then we reprint our bottom row. 
and done. This is reduced row echelon form. Okay, this one just looks a little different because there's not a pivot in every column. Okay, next example, we have this three by three matrix. I'm not gonna go all the way through. I'm just going to pop quiz you because uh, you run the risk of working with fractions in this one right away. How can you avoid that? So first row, we need to get this to equal one. So do we scale the first row by one half? We could, then we have to work with fractions. So instead, there are two options. We can swap rows one and row, we can swap row one and row three and then scale uh, the new row one by negative one. Or we could do row one equals row one. This is a two, remember, plus row two. And just like that, in this entry right here, we get two plus, oh, sorry, plus row one plus row three. And we would get two plus negative one, then we would get a one there. And we would get a six and we would get an 11. Okay, so those are our two options. We could do row replacement or we could swap and scale. Okay, so just remember, always avoid fractions if you can. Our last problem is another long and skinny matrix. Okay, it looks like this, zero, two, two, negative two. So this one is interesting. So we go to the top left and we say we need to make this one. But how do you do that, right? So I should have been more clear earlier. You don't go to the top left, you go to the first pivot. Okay, so you go to the row one's first pivot, or the row one's pivot, which is this one, negative three. And that's where you start the row, the row reduction algorithm. So you need to turn this into a one. So do you scale row one by negative one third? No, you could do row one equals row one plus two times row two, and you get minus three plus four is one. Or you could swap the rows and scale the new row one by one half, which is what I probably would do. Um, so, and I'm gonna do these two row operations in one go. So I'm gonna swap them and then skip. I'm gonna swap rows one and row two and scale the new row one by one half. So I get zero, one, one, negative one and I get zero, negative three, two, negative two, right? Then the last step is, or not the last step, then we identify our first pivot, right? First column has all zeros. And we need to get zeros below it. So we say row two equals row two plus three times row one. So this matrix is row equivalent two, zero, one, one, negative one, zero, zero. And we do this plus three of these, which is five. And we say this plus three of these, which is negative two minus three. This is negative five. And seeing this five, negative five, that screams out to me that you need to scale um, by one over the greatest common factor. So you get zero, one, one, negative one, and then you get zero, zero, one, negative one. And we're almost done. Here are our two pivots. We need to get zeros above them. So our last step is we say row one equals row one minus row two. So we say zero, one, zero, zero, and then the second row is zero, zero, one, negative one. And right there is reduced row echelon form. Okay, so there you have it. So it's tedious, I understand. Just do as many example problems as you can until you feel very confident. Um, and the more problems you do, the faster you get, and the less tedious it is because it doesn't last as long, basically. Okay, thank you for watching.